Dan Hallis of car from the Arabian Petition. Can you please call me back urgently? Please call me back urgently regarding Marble Arch. Thank you. Okay, today is Sunday the 12th of November. It is the 37th annual Arabain procession of Sayyid al-Shahada, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. It's now quarter past eight. Um, we finished last night about uh, one in the morning, uh, loading up the trucks. We hire every year two trucks. This year we have three trucks uh, full of um, all the things that we require for the procession. The two trucks, the, uh, the two large trucks have already left, Marble Arch and a third van uh, has also left for, for Marble Arch. Uh, we have a slight problem. We've had a phone call from one of our uh, stewards, our volunteers from Marble Arch. Apparently last night there was some kind of sports car accident inside Marble Arch and the area is cordoned off. So we need to go and check what's happening and hopefully get the area and the, the, the car removed as soon as possible because this will cause a delay to our setup for the procession. All we think of is that we have to then relocate to North Carriage Drive if that's possible. Because what can we do? Where else can we go? The whole of Arch Close, all, all the police have to move that vehicle. Yeah, please. Tell me it's really urgent. We, we are stuck. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I'll get in touch with them. Okay, thank you. It takes a good two hours uh, or two and a half hours to set up at Marble Arch. There are so many things to um, to um, display and to uh, put up at the arch. Both trucks, as you'll see when we get there, are completely full. And basically, everything has to come out. Um, the plan is, as every year, at 11 a.m., or in this case, 11.02 a.m., because today is um, Remembrance Sunday. So we have, we have to uh, be careful um, that we don't start until 11.02. Um, two children will recite the Holy Quran. And after that, we have what we call Children's Hour. So children will recite between 11.02 and Azan. Azan will be exactly 11.45 a.m. And then 20 minutes will be, is, is there for the um, Zohrain prayers. And um, after that, we start with the speeches. Then exactly at one o'clock, we will leave Marble Arch, inshallah. We will leave through the arch, uh, northbound, and then we will then turn, do a right turn and go down Park Lane. Once we, once, about, after about two hours, we should reach Curzon Gate. That's the last turning um, before Wellington Arch. Wellington Arch is, is the large arch, which is, which is by Piccadilly and the gardens of Buckingham Palace and Knightsbridge. So that's where we turn back towards Marble Arch and we plan to arrive at Marble Arch between 4 and 4.30 and we end with Ziyarat al Arabain and um, then food and tea and coffee and soup will be served.
At least six times, if not more, I was in big trouble. I did my best and then I said to Mawla, now it's yours. And every time, believe me, it, he, the Mawla helped me and gave me whatever I wanted. For example, this one, I was in the bed, not feeling well, so I received the call. Marble Lodge is closed. I was shocked. I got up and the only thing said, Mala, we have done what we could. Now it is up to you. And within 10 minutes, it was open. How? Who did it? I don't know. I know that who did it. I know I asked Mala and he said, only he could influence. Uh, in this country, once the police says it's closed for all day, then it's closed for all day. Nobody can do anything. Not even ministers, prime minister can interfere. The system is such, the police system, that nobody can interfere. You can't ring somebody, some minister or somebody else, you know, uh, please help us. They can't. Many times I was in trouble. Vakar doesn't know, a lot of them. And I keep telling Vakar, listen, do your best. He works very hard. I have, I don't know, not because he's my son, I don't know anybody who works so hard. He really works very, very hard, day and night. And sometimes he gets in trouble and this is not happening, that's not happening. I, I keep telling him, listen, do your best and leave the rest to their mom. And whatever you think you want to do, it will happen. It always happens. I, I'm watching it for the last 36 years because in the first 25 years he never went to the police. I, go, I went there alone and then he slowly took over and uh, now he does 90% of the job. Uh, I'm there sometimes to advise them uh, that don't do this or uh, leave it for next year, and don't rush it, uh, things like that. This year, I think, um, first of all, Arabain was on a Friday. A lot of our die-hard goers to Arabain are now going to Karbala. And of course, we always say the number one priority, of course, is Karbala. That is the real Arabain. So those people who can go to Karbala, please, please try and go. It's an amazing experience and try and go every year. In the past, often Arabain would be like on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So many people would fly back in time to London, to Heathrow or to Manchester or to Birmingham before Sunday and do both. They would be in Karbala and they'd have the opportunity to, to arrive back in time. This year was much more difficult. So a lot of our people who come every year, this year were not here. However, I still met people on Sunday morning who would come direct from the airport. Uh, they just landed, they made sure they booked their seats to their arrive for Arabain. And that was amazing. You've, you've walked from Najaf to Karbala, you're very tired, you've come back from Urbain and come straight to the procession from the airport without even going home. And that's an amazing, you know, inspirational uh, thing that people are so motivated after being so tired to come to Urbain. So that was the first challenge. We, we, we weren't sure this year you know, what will the turnout be because so many people will not be back from Gerbala. And then of course the second thing, as you all know, on the morning was disastrous. At 7 a.m. in the morning, there was a McLaren sports car which smashed into the traffic light outside a part of um, Marble Arch on Park Lane. And that sports car went straight into Marble Arch. And when we arrived at 8 o'clock um, in Marble Arch at Park Lane, the whole area was sealed off by police. We were in serious trouble in terms of our starting point our finishing point, where we have our food, where we have our namaz, our, our, our jamaat, where we have our speeches, that whole area is closed off by police, it's cordoned off, there's police tape everywhere. Nobody could enter the Marble Arch area. And that for us was a real, real challenge.
as I've mentioned previously. When you're outside in a procession, there are so many factors which are beyond our control. If you're doing a majalis at home or in Hosseinia, that itself is challenging. But at least most things are within your control. When you're outside, very few things are in your control. For example, the weather. If it starts snowing, there's heavy rain, for example. What are you going to do? Um, and in this case, something we never previously thought of, a major accident. That the actual venue that's been pre-booked a year in advance, all been agreed by with the police and the council, is now out of use. So I then started to call the numbers I had. Remember, it's a Sunday. Everything's closed. The council's closed. All my contacts who I speak to from the police, they're closed. They went Monday to Friday. Westminster events, which the police team, which are in charge of all events in London, only operate Monday to Friday. So it was you know, very worrying. What do we do? I finally got hold of the traffic management company that we hire on the day, and they have all the contacts and they managed to get hold of the head of the council. And we are very um, obliged by Ben Williams because he came from home. He was off. In fact, we invited him at a meeting at Arubain. Please come to Arubain. No, no, the weekend, I'm so busy. It's my, I'm with my family, I can't come. It's very difficult to come out to these events, you know, but thank you for the invitation. But you know, if, if Allah wants you to come, you'll come. And on Sunday morning, he left home. He came specially to Marble Arch. And, with, you know, and he was there at 9.30, an hour later. And the police said to us originally that the car which is in Marble Arch and this whole area will remain cordoned off for, until Monday. And I said, we, we, need, we need this now. Now remember, these police are local police. They don't understand the event. They're not involved in the event. They have no understanding of why we're here. But um, the council head who was there, he called everybody into action. He um, phoned for, for the mobile cleaners. He phoned for a recovery truck to come and collect the car. Um, he got the whole area reopened by half past 10. You know, I mean, my faith perhaps is not as strong as others. You know, I was thinking, what do I do? But the first time maybe I plead to Imam was saying, this is your procession. Only, what can we do? No, only you can help us. And it was amazing that in such a short time, this what could have been for us a real tragedy in terms of um, it would have been very difficult to start the event and to finish the event, to hold namaz. This would have to all be cancelled. That, you know, it all sort of took place. We were slightly behind schedule. We had children to recite between 11 and 11.45. That had to be cancelled until next year. So we were still preparing, getting ready for uh, Marble Arch. But Alhamdulillah, that for us was the biggest challenge this year, was to get the procession up and running on time. And we had Azan at on time, 11.45 a.m. And after that, the event went as per schedule. Even though in the morning, it was a very, very dark period for us, a very uncertain period, where we, we, we weren't sure what was gonna happen and how this event would take place. For the last 78 years, we are trying to tell, look, the only procession in the Islamic history is Arbaeen. For example, if you talk about 10th of Muharram, there is a procession. But on 10th of Muharram in Karbala, there was no procession like that. If you take the Eid Miraj Nabi, it is started about 250 years after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, 250, 230 years after that. So there was the only procession that we can call Islamic in history is Arbaeen, which was led by our Imam. And what was important is that most of the participants, 99% of them, were children and women. And it has taken a long time to persuade women and to please come to the procession. For this year, I think, there were more than 50% were ladies. And I'm very, very happy about it. 
in Iraq and Iran, they have different tradition. In Pakistan, ladies do not go to procession. In India, they don't go to the procession. They will watch it from the side. They will watch it from uh, some uh, houses top and so on. But actually, they are not in the procession. It's just the tradition. And uh, it has taken me a lot of persuasion, a lot of talking, a lot of explaining them, please come to the procession. Now you'll find, along with Arabs and Iraqi, Irani, you'll find Pakistani and Indian women as well. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, my name is Ruhi. The, um, I was responsible for uh, looking after the young, the young children and uh, they came from all walks of life. We want to represent uh, the Ladies Sakina, they're called the Ladies Sakina Brigade and I was uh, pretty responsible for helping them get through um, and giving, give them the responsibility to feel important as part of uh, the new generation that needs to understand the, that, that, that we stand for Imam Hussein and the sacrifices. At a young age, when they're made they're responsible, they start to feel that they are responsible for a lot of things. So at this time, they need to understand that uh, Lady Sakina, um, who was one of the youngest members of the Elul Bayt, um, and that she suffered very greatly, but they need to represent her in the time of um, the procession so that she feels that, you know, that she has been given a role in uh, Islam and that she is a very valuable member of the Elul Bayt. Um, people all around the UK are here to commemorate the uh, martyrdom of Imam Hussein and mashallah more than 10,000 people have participated today and it's uh, one of the biggest gathering um, in UK I feel I think and the um, message is that we're all here to remember Imam Hussein and his message and his message was to stand with the truth and um, not to not allow injustice and um, all around the world, people are remembering Imam Hussein and his messages. And there are many and many and many messages to think about uh, which he left with us. And one of them is um, uh, stand against the injustice, which is right now happening around the world. We can see in many countries. Um, but otherwise, with the Celts and the, and the police and the authorities, um, they're quite happy with the way we run the event. In fact, they're very happy in terms of, because we, we have almost 300 volunteers and they do a lot of work on the day to ensure that we follow the council guidelines. For example, if we're supposed to start at one o'clock, we make sure we, we leave Marlborough Arch one o'clock. We were supposed to finish by five o'clock, we finished by 10 past four. So we've made sure, our volunteers have made sure that we move the procession at the right speed at the right pace, and that there's no excuse for the council or the police so for next year to say, we're not, we're not happy with your event because you were over on the timing, for example. On the first four or five years, we have four speeches. English, Urdu, Persian, and Arabic. But we realize that we are doing 10 minutes English, 10 minutes Urdu, 10 minutes that, I said, no, this is not good. So slowly now, 60% of the time that we have is our English speakers. And the other 40 percent, you can have Arabic five minutes, five minutes. Well, I, I tell them five minutes only. Arabic, five minutes Persian, five minutes Urdu. And so they do only the Masai, nothing else. Uh, for five minutes, maybe six, seven minutes, but that's it. Today I'm just going to reflect upon a few points as to, again, why we have the success of gathering here in Marble Arch.
The main works for the Arabian start about four months uh, before the event. We start before Eid, where we start preparing for the event. So for example, we have we design the flyers, the posters, order the wristbands, and these sort of things. Um, at the same time, we then look at who to invite, who will be the speakers this year. Now, originally in the Arabian, back in 82, we only had one Urdu speech, I think, and maybe one English speech, if that. Uh, in fact, most probably it was only Urdu for the first year, and then we had Arabic as well. But um, since then, we've tried to really maximize the English output on Arabian. So, for example, this year and for the last several years, we've had three English speakers. So this year, we had Dr. Rebecca Marston, we had uh, Haji Muhammad Kumail Ganji, and for the first time, we had a non-Muslim speaker. We had the Reverend Frank Julian Gelly. Now, it was, it was really honored and great to have a non-Muslim speaker, a person from the church wearing his, you know, his regalia, his white collar, and to see him in London, in Marble Arch, talking about what Imam Hussein Alayhi Salam meant to him. So these are the sort of people we have to invite for the speakers. And he was very, very happy at the end. So he was so pleased and honoured. He felt honoured to address the followers of Imam Hussein Alayhi Salam in Marble Arch. And he said, you know, he's even now written an article, uh, which is now published online, about his feelings at how he was honoured and his link to Imam Hussain alayhi salam at Marble Arch. Also, we look at inviting um, the ulama who will recite in Arabic, in Farsi, and Urdu, and then looking at inviting other people. So we try and look at MPs, Houses of Parliament, the Mayor of London, and at the same time, look, try to also invite those who are not from our community. In terms of um, participants, this year, we believe the number to be, to be at least 15 to 20,000 people actually attended on the Arabian. You must remember, some people come for the entire event, some come for the, for the first hour or two hours, some come halfway through and then leave. They come for, they, they come for Ziyarat. Many people for them, they come for the Arabian for Ziyarat. They come there for half an hour, one hour, do their Ziyarat, and they return. So the overall number of people attended on the day we think was somewhere between 15 to 20,000. And that's probably, I'd say, two or 3,000 more than last year in terms of volume of people.